Okay, so our next guest is Laura Dudick, and we are so excited that you're on today to let everybody know a little bit more about you. You're one of our speakers at the Created Order Conference coming to Charlotte this June on the 29th, and thank you so much for taking time out of your crazy busy schedule, Laura, to be here today. <laughs> Yes, I'm so excited to be here. This is awesome. I know, and you just got finished with your own retreat, um, which wasn't exactly a conference, but kind of similar. That was super time consuming and a huge undertaking. So I know you're yeah. just starting to come off of that, um, and you just have a, you have a lot going on, girl. So tell us a little bit more about you and who you are, and you know how you got to where you are today. Yeah, um, that's a very deep question. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I, I love Jesus every single moment of my life, pretty much in the church. Um, it's just been a journey of deeper understanding of him and, and all of that. So it's been a roller coaster and an adventure and all of that in between. Um, but I currently right now do freelance design and I help a lot of entrepreneurs um, with their design stuff. I help you, which is awesome. I love it. Um, but then I also had this whole other side of me that um, is a passion for ministry. And that's what I went to school for. Um, so my undergrad was in psychology, religious studies, and um, adolescent counseling. And then when I went for my Master of Divinity degree, I went for a concentration in pastoral counseling um, because my heart and my passion is really to meet people um, in that place of their story, that they can understand more of what they've walked through, more of where they're going through the lens of the scripture. And so my heart and my soul is to help people embrace and own their entire story with Jesus. So whether it's the Bible studies that I write or the videos that I do or conferences or retreats that I create, it's all about helping people press into a true relationship with the Lord and pressing past fear, pressing past all those things that hold us up from our journeys um, and really facing it with the Lord. Yes, I love that. And I, I'm glad that you mentioned, because I want everybody to know that you've written several books um, that have been used for Bible studies. My very, very favorite one personally is called Written. And it's just really cool how you teach people how to not only look at where they want to go in the future, but to reflect on the past. Because a lot of our past you know, it has to do with where we are today and why we are the women we are. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's so, so important when we're going to be talking about figuring out what is the clutter that trips us up. And sometimes that clutter comes from our past, right? And our past experiences, mm -hmm. or even what we tell ourselves about the past, right? Yeah. It's so true. And I think that's where I came from in my own journey with the Lord was really trying to understand how do I unpack not only that I've carried in my life and that I've walked through, but the stuff that my parents have walked through and the generational um, just understanding of what's on my life right now. What is this pivotal moment that I'm walking through? What does Jesus say about it? And how do I continue forward in a deeper relationship with him to be a pure vessel for him to work to bring the kingdom of God wherever I go? And a lot of that is facing the stuff that's inside <laughs> to declutter inside so that we can be like a fullness of his glory to this earth. Yeah, absolutely. And I really, I see you as an example for these women. Another example of somebody who has gotten real clear about what your purpose is and you've embraced, you know, your gifts and your personality and all these things that make you uniquely yourself, which is directly implemented from God. And I think it's really um, going to be cool to see, you know, just for you to show who you are um, to other women as far as when they want to learn how to embrace their own purpose. And part of that is embracing their story. So I think why you're so on target with your personal calling and purpose is because you have embraced your past, um, which is not always easy to do. So I think that's a huge tool that you bring to the women. Um, I think that everybody watching needs to know that you will be speaking directly to the teens that attend the conference. And I can speak from experience that you're really, really good at this because you spoke at one of my conferences called Blurry, um, where you spoke directly to that conference is just for teens. And you really spoke to their hearts because we talk about all the time how teens, especially nowadays, are so, even though they have this huge 
um, group of friends on social media. They feel so alone so often. And I think that not only do you have a heart to understand them, but then to remind them and to guide them that they really truly are not alone. They have Christ alongside them. That's there as soon as they ask to be helped you know, for his guidance and discernment. And I feel like, and we've talked about this, that when you're so young and you're a teen, there's so many choices ahead and it can be a lot of clutter in your mind because you can have that clutter of, you know, teens have so much clutter. I mean, let's just face it. They have cluttered bedrooms, they have cluttered schedules, um, and they have that emotional. <laughs> they have emotional clutter. They're just like the epitome of clutter sometimes. And I know because I have two teens of my own. And I want um, people to understand that what we want for the teens at the conference is not only how to teach them organization skills that they can use for the rest of their lives. I'm a firm believer that kids need to learn how to organize just as much as they need how to learn how to read and write and ride a bike um, because they grow up to be adults that are overwhelmed with stuff if they don't learn that. But I also think it's super, super imperative for your um, future as a teen to learn who Jesus is. Why does Jesus yeah. want to be my friend? And, what kind of help can Jesus give me? And when can I rely on him? And when can I go to him? And I yeah. think that's something that um, you're going to bring to the table. Yeah. I mean, I used to do, I started off actually in middle school ministry. So when I was in college, I, my first like legitimate ministry position was middle school ministry director. And I was over 300 middle school students. So I was thrown into the fire while I was still in school. Um, but it was awesome because I learned so much and I really discovered there in that place to minister to teens, my passion for speaking and for, you know, giving a message that conveys the word of God. And I, um, I, I think it was in college, I heard this phrase um, that if um, fear will drive you to love God for a season, but love will, um, will push obedience for a lifetime. And I think that was really the epitome of my walk with the Lord as a teenager, that I feared God and I knew God, but it was really about that um, unconditional love and that security in him that would really drive me to love him for the rest of my life and to obey for the rest of my life. And so whenever I speak, whenever I um, get the, the opportunity to work with teens, I feel like that's so my heart to show his love. Because when you have that love relationship and you understand him and his nature, that's what fuels you to make the good decisions in college, the good decisions after college, the good decisions in your relationships, all of that. Um, and I just feel like that's such a foundation of not only the gospel, but when we really work with teens to help them have that deep understanding of his love. Because if you don't have that, fear will only get you obedient for a season. So I really want to drive that home with them. And I'm just so passionate about it. Oh my gosh, that's such a great point. And you know, as I think as parents, we've been given these teens to kind of just to, as a gift to shepherd for a short period of time. And I, you know, I think as my kids are getting closer to, and closer to leaving for, you know, college, I yeah. noticed that if the foundation isn't there, I'm not going to be in their ear all the time saying, don't do that. Do this. This is a better choice. They have to know in their heart. And it's so, so important for them to know that at any given point, they can check in with God and say, what do you think? Um, and, and learn how to hear the voice of God and learn how to be guided by God. Um, because like you said, obedience is so important, but it can be really difficult if you don't have, if somebody doesn't spell it out to you. Um, yeah. And I know for me, when I was a teen, you know, I just... I loved the Lord and then I got to college and I was kind of like always struggling between that world and the world inside that it was pulling me back. And no one really sat me down and taught me that. So I think it can be completely empowering for these kids um, yeah. to, and it could change their whole entire future. Yep. I mean, cause you realize that your parents' faith isn't going to be like you have the choice. And I grew up in a great Christian home. I love my parents. They love Jesus. But it wasn't them, you know, the ones that were going to dictate after I reached adulthood to say, okay, like you can take our faith now, like you make that decision. And so for me, my relationship with the Lord and really um, having him up close and personal, it wasn't just I'm reading the word and the word stays there in my quiet time. That's it. You know, in this little 15 minutes in the morning, it was really about understanding where's Jesus in my every day. And like you said, hearing his voice um, for myself and having that impact the decisions that I make. 
and having his vision. And that's really what I want to convey to the teens at this um, specific event is about the vision that we have. Because when we see God's vision for our life and Jesus's vision for our future, which totally encompasses our purpose, that's when we start making the right decisions in the moment because we realize, oh yeah, that relationship, yeah, it's not taking me where I need to go. Like I need to cut it loose. That was my vice, if you will, was really bad relationships, <laughs> really bad ones. They were all masquerading as good ones. So, you know, it's like you have to realize um, and you have to catch God's vision for your life. And that's what I want to help the teens do is when you hear his voice, when you start seeing how he sees, that's when you start lining up your decisions in the present moment to lead you to where you need to go. And I think that's where sometimes teens don't have the capacity, um, even mentally, to connect those just in the moment, kind of instant gratification. And I want to break through that to show them this is God's vision for your life. So when you make the decision today and tomorrow and the next day, it has to lead into that. And this, yeah, yeah it's so true. It's so true. In relationships, whether it be a love relationship or a friendship, it can be mm -hmm. a huge amount of clutter in a teen's life. And it can be, um, yeah it can make them feel like they have to please the people in their life more than they have to be obedient to God. So I think, you know, it's cool because I think with, since we're doing this separate away from the women, I think the teens will really open up to you more um, and be able to talk to you. You know, I know after you spoke at the blurry conference, they really sought you out. They really wanted to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. So I think it's really cool to keep, let them have the privacy and let them be able to just be themselves and bond with one another. Um, and just feel like a judgment free zone. I think that's what teens really need today. So I'm really, really excited. Um, and you're coming all the way from Cleveland. Yeah, I'm excited. Charlotte, Laura? Yes. I actually was going to go to seminary there. Really? I went to two seminaries and the one, they were actually going to give me a full ride because they had never had a woman pursue a master of divinity before. Really? So, yeah. Okay, that's okay. awesome. It didn't work out, but um, <laughs> but I did go to uh, just go at Liberty, so it was a little close. But yeah, yeah I was really considering Charlotte. Yeah, I know at Liberty. How far is Liberty from there? It's not that far at all, is it? Like, yeah, it's in the four, hills of Virginia. Four so. hours, or is it more? Yeah, I think it's like five, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm excited. We're gonna be in Charlotte together. I haven't been back for so long. I'm just excited to see all the new development and just, it's just a great city. It really, really is. Um, and it, it's such a, an open-minded city. So I love that about it. Yeah. It's yeah. so beautiful. I'm so excited to go back. I know. Me too. Me too. <laughs> all right. Well, if anyone wants to find out a little bit more about Laura, you can go to the website, jenniferfordberry.com under the Created Order Conference page. You can see a link to her site. She has written, what, three or four books? Four. Four. Okay. So there's a lot of good information. She also has her own retreats and speaks a lot. So just check her out. You do really great, awesome Facebook live videos too, I will say. So yeah. So check her out. And you know, even more importantly, come to Charlotte and meet her in person. Uh, we really want you to come. I know that this is going to be something that, um, really changes your life and speaks to you and, and, you know, impresses upon you what God would want you to know and what God would want you to say and where he would want you to go from that day forward. So um, I'm excited for everybody that attends. I think it's going to be amazing. Yeah. I mean, I think it's like a reward immediately that you're already going to step forward to clutter your life and to find your purpose. You say yes to doing this. When you get you're already taking that one. So that's something to me that people are – you know, immediately upon signing up, they are ready to go. They are already decluttering their lives because they're intentionally stepping away to hear the voice of God and initiate their purpose for their life. It's amazing. Absolutely. And even just sometimes taking a step and making a commitment on your calendar starts to change your life even before you get there because you are taking control and let a, instead of letting life and the stuff about life control you. And I see that a lot with people I work with. As soon as they make that commitment to themselves and they like know they have something to look forward to, their life will start changing the day they purchase the tickets. Um, they'll yep. just be more aware, they'll feel more intentional, and they'll know that instead of um, kind of being okay with having this kind of life of just mediocre, you know, mediocrity and everyday norm, that they're going to be like, knowing 
that something big is coming. And that is huge. It's a huge energy boost. Yeah. I was yeah. going to say, I mean, it gives you that target that you can take a deep breath because you know, big deep breath is coming, especially yeah. for moms. You know, during our last retreat, they were all like, honestly, I signed up because I didn't want to make meals for a weekend. You know, if that's your purpose, just to step away and go out for a meal minded um you just have to set it up make it happen and i feel like even that gives everyday purpose because you can take a deep breath you know a deep breath is coming you're intentionally yep. putting it in your calendar and that's huge 100 percent, 100 percent. well thank you so much for being on today taking time out and i'm so excited you're coming to charlotte to be with us for the conference so everybody look up laura laura dudick she has amazing books and an amazing, amazing message, an amazing heart for God. So thank you, Laura, for being here. Thank you. See you guys in Charlotte. Yay.